Okay, guys, this stuff is from section 4.8. It's all about the quadratic formula, which you see here in the top right-hand corner of every page we'll be working on. Um, our goal is to find the values of r that make this equation true. It's equal to zero. It's in standard form, so I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, I notice that my a is equal to 3, my b is equal to negative 8, and my c is equal to negative 9. Number 11, by the way. Um, so I'm just going to start plugging in. If b is negative 8, then negative b is positive 8. So I'll start with 8 plus or minus the square root. And negative 8 squared is 64. 8 times 8, whether it's positive or negative, would be 64. Minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 9. And that's all going to be divided by 2 times a, which is 6. Okay, so now the thing that I'm going to need to do is take my calculator out and put all this information into my calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator, if I can remember, is that one? Okay. And I'm going to put everything inside. It's called the discriminant. I'm going to put everything inside of the root in together. So it's 64 minus... 4 times 3 times negative 9. When I do, I get 172. Okay, that's fine. Set that away for a second. This is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 172 over 6. Now I need to look at the 172 and see if I can break it down. 172. Um, I'm not really sure if there's a quick, easy way to do this. Um, obviously, I could go in here to y equals and do 172 divided by x and get to my table. But since most of you won't have that access, I'm actually just going to go back to this mode here and do 172. I'll divide by small squares to start out. I'll divide by 4. 43 is actually a prime number. And so this is the end of the line for me. And so what I'm going to try to do is just split it by the 43 and the 2. And so this will be root 4, I guess, rather, and root 43. That becomes a 2. All right, so my answer so far is 8 plus or minus 2 root 43 all over 6. But since the 8, the 2, and the 6 are all divisible by uh, 2, I can reduce this. So this equals 4 plus or minus square root of 43 all over 3. And that is it. If you notice, all three of those were reduced by 2, and that's how I got my answer. On number 17, um, the issue is that it's not equal to 0, and it's not even in standard form. So when I make this change to move the 2v by subtraction, I'm also going to reorder it. So it's in what we call descending order or standard form. So it'll be negative 5v squared, that's that piece, minus 10v plus 3 equals 0. I now have my a, my b, and my c. All right, so as I go to put this in the quadratic formula, the opposite or negative of b is positive 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10, or negative 10 times negative 10 is still 100, minus 4 times negative 5 times 3, all divided by 2 times negative 5, that's negative 10. All right, so now when I pull up my calculator and I run those numbers again, I've got 100 minus 4 times negative 5 times 3 equals 160. So this equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 160 all over negative 10. Well, 160. I see a 4 built into the 16, so I'm going to take, actually, 
16 times 10. I could try a few different combinations. Um, if I had tried 4, I'd have been left with 40. And 40 has a 4 in it and a 10. So I'd have to do this twice. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. I prefer to do this method, where I have the square root of these two, the biggest number I can. That's a 4. So here I'll have 10 plus or minus 4 root 10 divided by negative 10. Now, once again, I notice that my 10, my 4, and my negative 10 are all divisible by 2. Um, so I'm going to divide by 2, but I also see that I have this negative sign there. So let's just talk real quickly about what happens when we divide by negatives. Okay, this divided by a negative becomes a negative. So my first term should be a negative number. But when I divide the positive and the negative by a negative, they literally would switch. So you can keep the positive negative choice there the same as before, but the sign out here should change. All right, so I'm going to divide all three pieces by a negative 2. So I would have negative 5 plus or minus. Remember, those are switched, but they're still both there. Uh, sorry, 2, let me read. You know, make a mistake, fix it. That's the way to do it. Plus or minus 2 root 10 all over and that's my answer for 17. You might notice in 17 in the back of the book they have a negative out here, um, but that's because, again, the plus and minus, it's not um, gonna change anything there. All right, number 30. Okay, first thing I wanna do is I wanna move this 21n over here. All right, so I have 9n squared minus 63n minus 162 equals 0. Um, this is in a section where I'm allowed to factor, I'm allowed to do a lot of different things. And so one of the things you always want to look for is, are they all divisible by the same thing? Now, if I'm going to use the quadratic formula, I could plug it in right now and get the exact same answer as if it's reduced first. Um, but that's kind of a choice you have to decide how you want to handle that. So I am going to go ahead and um, divide everything by 9. And I'll get n squared minus 7n minus, and uh, 162 divided by 9 is 18. That equals 0. So again, I could use a quadratic formula here, or I could try to set up the parentheses. Parentheses will be a little bit easier or quicker if it works out, which again, the section from 27 through 30 um, in your assignment, you are allowed to use factoring if you choose. I look at my signs, this tells me they are different. So plus, minus. Factors of 18 that have a difference of 7 are 9 and 2. Okay, But I need to have a negative 7, so the bigger number has to be negative. So negative 9, positive 2. The last step is to say, what would I plug in for n in both cases to make each parenthesis 0? So if I plugged in a negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So n could equal negative 2 or n could equal positive 9. You'll notice in a section from 27 through 30, those four problems, that they all turn out as nice round numbers like that. Actually, that's not true. Some of them are fractions, but they're all fractions that we can get. There's no square roots in the answers. The last one we're going to look at here is 41. Um, order doesn't matter which way I go, so I'm just going to move this 3x squared so I get a positive a, a value, and subtract 7x, subtract 7x. And as I do this, I'm going to put it in descending order, the standard form. So I'll have 5x squared minus 5x plus 85 equals 0. Um, I'm going to go ahead and divide by 5 to make these numbers smaller. There's no other reason to do it than to just make them smaller. x squared minus x plus, I believe it's 17 equals 0. Um, 
I hope that's right. 17. Hey, I'm right. Okay. So I have this part so far. Now, I could try to factor, but 17 is prime, which means I'm not going to come up with the right solutions here. So this must be done by either completing the square or by the quadratic formula. Since we're working with the quadratic formula so much today, I'll stick with it. And my a is a 1, my b is a negative 1, and my c is 17. So opposite of negative 1 is 1 plus or minus the square root. 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times a is 1 and c is 17. All that will be divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. Already I'm thinking I'm going to have an imaginary number here, but I'll plug all this into my calculator. Um, we're going to do 1 minus 4 times 1 times 17. <coughs> I get negative 67. Now 67 is prime, so this is 1 plus or minus uh, the square root of negative 67 over 2. I notice right away that I have a negative inside a square root. That means it's going to come out as an i. So my final answer is 1 plus or minus i root 67 all over 2. Those are hopefully some problems that will help you get through the quadratic formula. Basically it's plugging all of this information, the discriminant, into the equation and uh, working from there. Okay. Uh, good luck. I hope it works out well for you. And uh, bring your questions to class, okay? All right. Thanks.